UTPA men's and women's basketball in action against Idaho and Seattle. We'll see how they did. We take you inside the Bronx father-son coaching duo. And with the spring upon us, we preview the upcoming tennis and track and field seasons. This is Bronx Country. Welcome to Brown Country. I'm Jonah Goldberg. This week it was the UTPA men's basketball team's turn to play their first WAC home games hosting Idaho and Seattle. Idaho came to town first and this was a game that was full of quirks while becoming an instant classic. Our first highlight comes before the opening tip. The Bronx assessed a team technical during warmups, so Glenn Dean goes to the line, makes one of two free throws, and it's one to nothing Vandals. That's going to be important later. The Vandals jumped out to a quick 11-point lead. Now they're up 10 with seven minutes to go in the half, and Javon Farrell provides a spark. Brings the Bronx within eight. Less than a minute later, Hurley Johnson gets the Bronx within six. Lori Toivonen brings the Bronx within four, and then Jamal Dantzler explodes onto the scene. This layup brings the Bronx within two, and this one ties the game at 31 with two minutes left in the half. Almost halftime, Bronx down five, Dantzler from the corner at the buzzer. Bronx within 36-34. First possession of the second half, Shaq Hines. Hits the layup, draws the foul, and nails the free throw. The Bronx have their first lead. It's 37-36. Idaho responded with a 14-4 run to push their lead out to nine, but Hines is on the case. This layup makes it a seven-point game, and this layup makes it a three-point game. Now, the Bronx pulled within one on a few occasions, starting with a couple of free throws by Shaq Boga that made it 54-53 with a little over eight minutes left. Then Farrell brings the Bronx within 59-58 and 61-60 with two sets of free throws. And then with under three minutes to play, we're back to Boga. Brings the Bronx within 63-62. Next time down the court, Bronx down three, and this time, Boga pulls up from long distance and ties the game. 65-65. Now you might remember Jamal Dantzler scored seven points at the end of the first half. Well, now it's the second half, and it's late in the game. Puts the Bronx up 67-65. 4.4 seconds left in regulation. Bronx lead cut to one. Dean goes for two from the line. Hits one, so we're going to overtime. Two minutes left in overtime, and look at Hines. Puts the Bronx up 70-69. 9.9 .9 seconds left in overtime, Bronx down one. Hines at the line, goes one for two, ties the game. I know it a chance to win it, but Mike Scott misses. Farrell the rebound, throws up the half court heave, and oh, so close, but we're going to a second overtime. And the Bronx showed a spurt of offensive energy right out of the gate. Farrell with the layup here. Boga hits a jumper to put the Bronx up four, with 3.09 left, it's their first two possession lead of the game. And then, one minute later, it's Boga again. Gives the Bronx their largest lead of the game at 81-75. The Vandals chipped away. Within two with four seconds left, Pauline Mapale goes for the line, hits one of two, but the Vandals get the rebound. And after a timeout, watch Perion Calendret by the right elbow. Draws his defender away and then finds the lane for the bank shot. Puts the Vandals on top 86-85 with half a second left and that turned out to be the final score. Four Bronx reached double figures in scoring. Javon Farrell had a huge game, recording his second double-double with 22 points, a career-high 17 rebounds, a season-high seven assists, and two steals in 45 minutes. The 17 rebounds were the most by a WAC player in a game this year. Each of the Shacks scored 19 points. Dantzler finished with 10. It's a great, great way to learn from, great thing to learn from, you know what I'm saying, a heartbreaking loss. Every play matter, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody's like, ooh, if I'd have made that free throw. So the whole team is kind of, we all can get better. We all miss free throws. We all had a couple crucial turnovers. We all had defensive breakdowns. So we all can get better from this. It's definitely frustrating, but, but we know uh, it's another game. So we just got to keep our heads up and keep fighting and get better. You know, it's not 
effort problems, yeah. it's mental errors. No rest for the weary, as 45 hours later, the Bronx found themselves hosting Seattle. And just like against Idaho, out of the gate, the Bronx find themselves down 11, but then Alex Majewski buries the three. A little later on, Hurley Johnson hits the layup, and then Javon Farrell gets a bucket of his own, Bronx down 18-9. Six minutes to go in the first half, Jack Hines with the layup, Bronx back within eight, and then with under three minutes left in the half, Jamal Dantzler to jumper to bring the Bronx within 24-17. That's as close as they got as the Red Hawks roll to a 64-46 win. Farrell led the Bronx with 14 points on four of eight shooting, also led the Bronx in assists with four. Hines finished just shy of a double-double with nine points and nine rebounds. Our defense was fine. We played we play good defense. It's, uh, the problem right now is just putting the basketball in the hole. We played good. They were bigger. We held them to one shot most of the night. So. We did a good job defensively, and we, we didn't let them run their stuff. And the the number one kid, the leading scorer in the conference, he didn't go off for a crazy big night. He had 35 a couple of games ago. So, I mean, we did a good job containing them on defense. It's just we got to get it going offensively as a team. And they want to come out and play well for these people, and they're just nervous and can't get going. And all at once you look up and you're down 11-0 again, and this time you couldn't, you couldn't battle it back. Uh, we had some opportunities in the second half to where we got it down to about 12, 13, but couldn't knock a couple down and get Seattle to any point where they felt like they were nervous. Here's a look at the WAC standings. New Mexico State, Utah Valley, and Chicago State, the remaining undefeateds. Chicago State is one of the Bronx next two opponents. They meet Saturday afternoon, but first, the Bronx have a date at Kansas City on Thursday. One thing you may have noticed in the Seattle game is that the Bronx weren't the only team in the field house to employ a father-son coaching duo. The Bronx have Dan Hipshire as the head coach, his son Andy, the associate head coach. As for Seattle though, it's the son, Cameron Dollar, who is the head coach, while the father, Donald Dollar, is the assistant. It's an arrangement that Dan Hipshire wouldn't necessarily mind being a part of sometime down the road. Hopefully that, that becomes the case. He's a deserving kid and, and I think he'll be a head coach someday. For now though, Hipshire is just happy to be able to work with his son. Well, it's great uh, because I think he's pretty good at what he does. Uh, having your son on staff only keeps your wife happy. But uh, in terms of, of being a coach, uh, Andy's got a great base. You know, he's worked with some great coaches, Bob Knight, Lon Kruger, uh, Stan Heath, been around the recruiting thing uh, in some great environments. and. So really from recruiter to, to floor coach to, to game prep to the whole parts of the program, he's, he's well prepared and does a, does a very good job in his field and I'm proud of him for it. This isn't the first time the Hipshires have worked together. Andy played for Dan at Akron, which was a great experience for both of them. I think the fact that, uh, that I could play took care of a lot of that favoritism uh, part of things and, and I knew coming into it that uh, when it came down to, to favoritism or, or, or getting the benefit of the doubt, that wasn't going to happen because that's just uh, the part of the situation that, that uh, isn't fair to other players on the team. If, if me being the coach's son, uh, I'm getting the, the benefit of the doubt here or there. So I knew that coming in and, and uh, that didn't bother me one bit. And I knew I had to, to earn everything that I got. and. Uh, I think that's the way it should be and that's how it was and, and uh, that had no effect on me and I had a really, really good experience uh, playing for my father. That was probably tougher at times because you know you get demanding uh, probably more on him than you do the other kids. So uh, and then Andy went through a lot of injuries and, and, and uh, but it was a great experience. He, he was a heck of a player for us. I think he's top 10 or 12 in all the Akron statistical categories. and did a great job and had a great career and it was fantastic to have him around and be coaching him and his brother. To be able to have played for him and now coach with him, it's a unique opportunity and experience. When Andy learned of the opportunity to coach with his dad, it was a no-brainer for him. Oh, that, that was everything in my decision was uh, being able to work alongside him and, and uh, like I said, I've been around him a lot and, and learned a lot, but I haven't been on the same staff as him. and, and uh, when you're playing for him as a head coach, uh, you see things differently than when you're coaching with him. And uh, it's been an extremely valuable experience thus far. And 
I know it's only going to get better and I'm only going to learn more. And I've learned a lot on other staffs and uh, it's just awesome to, to be with a great coach and, and, and learn from him, but then also uh, obviously he's family. Well, I still look at him. He's my son. And uh, yeah, he, he, he's got a job to do when he does his job. But you know, when you look at your son, it's your son. So, uh, but uh, you know, I don't hope, hopefully don't treat him any differently than, than I do the others. And, uh, but, but you know, he's got the same demands that he's probably always had put on him by being a coach's son. While the men were at home, the women were on the road. Next on Bronc Country, highlights from the women's basketball games at Idaho and Seattle. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the Big Dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. While the men's basketball team was at home, the women's basketball team embarked on arguably their toughest road trip of the season, visiting defending WAC tournament champion Idaho and defending WAC champion Seattle. We start with Idaho, Bronx down six early, but not for long. Tanisha Walker with the layup. And then back-to-back -back threes, first, Kaylin Boyd, and then Alexandria Hill, 18-16 Bronx. Two minutes later, we're back to Boyd. And then next time down the court, oh, captain, my captain, it's Laquita Garner for three. Caps the 13-nothing run, Bronx up 23-16. Idaho comes back to go up seven early in the second half, but the Bronx respond. Walker nails the three there. Jasmine Thompson hits the jumper. Brittany Bush ties the game. And then Boyd puts the Bronx back up 45-43. The game stayed close for a few more minutes, as this Bush three-point play gets the Bronx within one, but the Vandals pull away down the stretch to win 76-65. Good to see Bush and Boyd back in the lineup and contributing. Shantae Goff led the Bronx with 12 points. Sherelle Price had a career-high 11. Now, normally we would get head coach Larry Tidwell's take, but he's under the weather, so associate head coach John Ishii, you're up. You know, we had chances to win the game. I thought that uh, uh, we played hard. Uh, we only had nine turnovers, although we valued and protected the ball pretty well. 45 hours later, the Bronx were at Seattle, and they had a few early leads, starting with the Shante Goff layup to make it two to nothing. Then Sherelle Price hit a three to put the Bronx up five to two, and Tandria Nolan made a layup to put the Bronx up eight six. The Bronx were within two at 12-10 after this Brittany Bush layup, where the Red Hawks scored the next nine points while pulling away for an 84-62 victory. Goff led the Bronx in scoring for the seventh time with 14 points. Laquita Garner scored a season-high nine points while going three for five from the field. Their three-headed monster of Sowell, Ward, and uh, Shepard really, really took it to us. You know, they had great size. Uh, you know, they're very seasoned and experienced team playing at home. They scored 32 points in the paint compared to our 10. And basically, you know, there's other factors involved. But if you look at it at the end of the day, when you get out-rebounded, and you give up 32 in the paint points to, and you only get 10, I think, you know, we lose by 20, 22. There's, you know, there's a basic difference in the ball game. Here's a look at the WAC standings. Idaho and Seattle at the top. Kansas City, who the Bronx hosts Thursday at seven, in third at two and one. Chicago State, who the Bronx hosts Saturday at seven, in ninth at 0 and three. We got a big, big home stand coming up with, uh, starting with UMKC on Thursday night. Need anybody and everybody to come out and support our kids. They, they're playing extremely hard, good group. Uh, we're excited about the opportunity to get back to hopefully two and two in the league and uh, then go from there. But UMKC is a, uh, a great free throw shooting team. 
Uh, they're a team that's got really good guard play. It starts with their point guard, uh, O'Connell, number 15. Uh, she, she's she got close to like 200 free throw attempts, so she knows she knows how to get to that free throw line. And they've got good inside play with their post, their athletic. I mean, they've got a good blend and balance of inside-outside play. And uh, Coach Freeze does a great job. But uh, we're at home. Uh, we really need to bounce back. We talked about it in earlier today in practice. It's the most important game on our schedule this year because it's the game coming up on Thursday night. And uh, we really, really, uh, we got to come out with uh, uh, guns a-blazing and, and, and bucking and <laughs> bronking. And we got to find a way to win Thursday night. Now that winter break's over, it's time to start thinking about spring break. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking Vegas. And what do you know? That's where the WAC tournaments are this year. You can get a ticket to all 14 WAC tournament men's and women's basketball games for just $165. We even have an in on hotel rooms through corporate travel. So give us a call or visit utpabronx.com slash WAC today. Hey, we've been telling you Bronx Country just got a whole lot bigger, haven't we? Well, Viva Las Vegas! Spring is in the air. It's already in the 70s in the Rio Grande Valley, and that means it's just about time for tennis and track and field. Coming up on Broad Country, we preview their upcoming season. This week, UTPA students return to campus for the spring semester. It's in the 70s and sunny and a great time to be in Edinburgh. For some of these students, though, it's not only time to get back to class, but the competition track, field, and courts. The UTPA track and field and tennis teams opened their seasons this weekend. The track and field team had a preview meet at home in December, but it'll be their first time indoors since last spring. Of course, they're just excited to be getting back to business. It is, it's very excited. Um, for those that don't participate in cross country, this is their season, it, it's, it's track season. So as a program, we're all excited. We've been working hard all fall and we're ready to show what we've been working towards. The Bronx returned three athletes who won indoor conference championships in the Great West last year, in Martin Kass, who won two, and Jesus Alvarez and Jasmine Davison, who won one each. And they know it's gonna be a challenge to repeat in the WAC. Well, what we communicate to them and the team as a whole is it's going to take more. We are in a new conference. We are the new kids on the block. Um, what you did last year doesn't carry over to this year. It's, it's a whole new crew. Um, we've, we've got a lot of work to do. If, if they want to get on the top of the podium, they're, they're really going to have to work for it. But before the Bronx can worry about the WAC championships, their sights are set on their 12-team meet at Texas A&M on Friday. We just tell them to do what they've been practicing. You know, that's why we practice. You know, we practice for competition. So they continue to do what they've been doing. And you know, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll see how it went. We'll get back to practice and, and try to show up again the next week and, and do better. The women's tennis team is ready to hit the courts again after playing well in three fall tournaments. They're hoping that this success carries over to the dual meet schedule. The Bronx open up their season with a tough test on Saturday at 19th ranked Baylor. I'm definitely excited to start the season. I'm, I've been looking forward to it all break. I've been thinking about this season and how it's going to be improved from last year. We have pretty much a new group from the last spring and we've just added a new player here for this semester. So I think a lot of good things are going to happen for us in the future. The Bronx have one senior, Captain Wanda Begalan, which makes this her opportunity to leave it all on the court. I'm hoping she doesn't feel a lot of added pressure being her last season. I'm hoping she just goes out and enjoys it. Um, she's trained really hard. She's come back and, and I think she's done her work that she needed to over the break just on her own while she traveled back home. I think she's just excited for it. I think her teammates are going to work really hard to give her a good ending. The Bronx also have three returning sophomores, Didi Fachikova, Regan Greenwood and Julia Perez, who Coach Vallejos hopes will take the next step. They showed me some good things in the fall, and so I think if they just stay on the right track and they stay focused and stay dedicated to each individual match instead of just looking forward too soon, I think that they should be good. The men's tennis team also opens up their spring season with a tough match as they visit 12th-ranked Texas A&M on Sunday. But just like everybody else, they're just happy to be back on the court. First, it's just good to get everybody on the training court, in the weight room. Guys are, you know, are healthy. Uh, and so, you know, so we're making progress that way, especially with two new guys. Um, you know, we also had another guy, you know, we got a senior who was out basically all fall. So it's really 
you know, we have three new guys, quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned. So uh, it, it's, it's exciting for me as a coach just to see the progress uh, and to see how the guys handled themselves over break, uh, over December, you know, over the holidays and be able to stick to it and, and make some strides and maintain uh, the gains that we had made in the fall. The Bronx have used this week of practice time to work on a few things, but are happy that they had a few weeks of winter break to recharge. They did training over December, but you know, they, you got to have time to recover and to recuperate. Some guys, you know, a little dinged up more, more than others from the fall, so they had to, re, you know, heal themselves that way. You know, you got to spend, you need to spend time with family and friends. All these guys, you know, all of them live somewhere else except we have one local guy. Um, everybody else is far away. I mean, you know, across ponds, you know, across oceans and everything else, you know, time zones. So it's important they get to spend time with family and friends. So, you know, it's not the three, four hours a day, six days a week that they're doing it. The Bronx are a very senior laden team with three seniors in total, and they intend to lean on their seniors and their captain, Sebastian Job, this season. It's not always something that, that I do. It just really depends on the team, depends on uh, if the person really, really wants it and they exhibit the right, you know, the correct behavior and always want, you know, do the right things and make mistakes. They just don't make the same one again. And, and Sebastian has shown a, a willingness and a desire to be the captain. He wants to wear that letter C and it means a lot to him. He grows up in a culture where being a captain means something, you know, and, and so it's, it's a tremendous value to him and to me. So he and I, we, we see eye to eye on that. So last fall he came to me, he's like, coach, I'd, I'm really interested in being the captain. And I was like, all right, let's, let's talk about it. And so, the end of the fall, I spoke with every every Bronc. We sat down eyeball to eyeball. We talked about a lot of things, and one of the things is about leadership always, uh, you know, and to a man, they all agreed like, yeah, Sebi, is, uh, he's been leading us uh, in many ways, by example and also vocally and with his energy and just consistently uh, day in and day out what he's doing and how much he cares uh, about our university and cares about our tennis team and our program. Uh, if you want to show your support for the tennis and track and field teams, or any of our other sports for that matter, donate to the Bronc Athletic Fund today. You can become our member of the BAF for just $50 a year. All of the money raised goes directly to student athlete scholarships. So visit BroncAthleticFund.com today to see how you can make a meaningful impact on the lives of student athletes. One way you can donate to the Bronc Athletic Fund is by participating in our 8th Annual Bay Fishing Tournament, affectionately known as Bait, on South Padre Island on April 12th. You can be one of eight teams to win over $10,000 in cash prizes including a $4,000 grand prize. There's also a raffle to win a $35,000 boat. Interest peaked? I'll bet it is. Visit utpabronx.com slash bait for more information. Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com. Here's what's coming up for the Bronx. The basketball team faced Kansas City on Thursday and Chicago State on Saturday, with the women at home at 7 p.m. each day and the men on the road. Track and field opens the indoor season at Texas A&M on Friday. Women's tennis visits number 19 Baylor on Saturday, and men's tennis visits number 12 Texas A&M on Sunday. We want to thank you for stamping your passport in Bronx country this week. Schedule another visit for next week. But until then, Madness is calling. The 2014 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. March 12th through the 15th at Orleans Arena in Las Vegas. 16 teams battle through the brackets on their way to the big dance. Be there to see who will go home the big
big winner. Ticket packages on sale now at utpabronx.com.